Um, so the first big question is, what does leadership mean to you? Re realising that you're not a font of wisdom and every day is new and different and you need your team to deal with those issues that arise. And there are always new issues that pretty well no one's faced before. Right. To deal with them intelligently and without using their experience. That The world is so fast moving that experience really isn't of that much use. I mean, just occasionally it is, but mostly it isn't because the problems are all new. And actually, if you are pioneering and doing different things, you almost don't need to inspire them because they're so excited and worked up and realize that they're pioneering and are hugely self-motivated. Setting up a, an organization or a, an environment where colleagues want to, um, want to pioneer, want to contribute, to never shoot down a silly idea, because often silly ideas are the best. It's the conventional ideas that you mustn't follow. And cr creating that environment where people want to be different, they want to pioneer, they're not worried about experience. It's their intelligence and their radical thinking and their pioneering that will find the solutions. And that, that's for me, that's what leadership is about, setting that sort of environment. Are you very hands on with the products or do you prefer to let the employees take control? Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of both, really. You know, it is. It is my company and I should be proud of the products. In the final analysis, I, I make the decisions or the board makes decisions. And uh, it would be e easier in a way to say, oh, well, look, engineers, do what you like. But then there isn't a consistent theme. When one person, or in, in my son is heavily involved now, the two of us think, think very much the same way, actually. It gives everything we do a theme, and I believe that's important. So I, I think we're, we're sort of scene setters rather than micromanaging everything. Having said that, a lot, a lot of the times I get down into tiny detail in products because tiny de detail can be very, very important. With these people that you trust and work with, what characteristics do you look for? Ah, well, um, that they're enterprising, they're curious. Curiosity is really important. If someone in an interview starts asking questions, you know, why is that like that? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing it in this way? That that's uh, you know that's going to be that person's going to be fit in really well and be a good be a good employee. So it's someone with an inquiring mind, an intelligent mind. And someone who, as I say, doesn't lean on their experience. And we're great employers are graduates. And if I had my way, I would only ever recruit graduates. And now, actually, um, undergraduates which, which, through our university. So that, those are the sort of people we're looking for. On the whole, young people, because we want people who pioneer and haven't experienced something before, and people who don't bring previous solutions to the table, because they won't work for us. We're trying to be different and trying to pioneer and doing different things and the old rules won't work. How do you decide to stop pursuing a product? Are there signs which you see where you just wouldn't keep carrying on with it? Yes, I mean, the car is a very good example. The reason is usually not a technical or design reason. It's simply that uh, you're not gonna make any money out of it and it could bring the company down. And just occasionally you have to make those really, really awful decisions. Mm. You know, we have 500 people working on the car who are passionate about it. I had to stand up and say, we're not going ahead with it because it's just too commercially risky. No, it's an awful thing to have to do. I mean, the, th the thing is with most decisions like that, when you're launching a new product, you've got no idea how successful it's going to be. And market research is useless. Uh, it doesn't tell you anything. And you, it's all, all introducing a new product is always a huge risk. Do you ever find that you ever lose motivation and how do you regain it? of new technology and new products we want to do um, and we don't need to be motivated we just want to do them and actually giving up the car a lot of the car people came over to the other side of the business so we're able to accelerate everything that we were doing so actually it was a wonderful opportunity to push even harder on what we were doing if you come in every day and solve problems engineering problems or company problems whatever they are you don't need motivating you've just got to solve the problems and yeah. solving them is is exciting. Money doesn't really seem like the measure of success at Dyson. Um, if there was a metric or a definition for success, what do you think it would be? Oh, whether or not the product was a good product and that it did what it was intended to do. Sometimes products are great products, I believe, like our washing machine. Um, but we sold it too cheaply 
and it didn't make money and we had to stop it because we were losing so much money with it. But I still think it was a great product. So I don't see the washing machines a failure. Um, I'm still using them 20 years after we stopped production and people really loved it, but it just wasn't a commercial success. You, know, you don't get everything right. And I don't think huge sales or making lots of money out of a product is necessarily a measure of a success, which is, I suppose, the thrust of your original mm. question. So how do you like deal with having so many different people working on different aspects of your work? And how important is delegating in your success? Uh, well, delegating is, is ter terribly important. You must delegate everything. So I, I've delegated everything. And you only micromanage when things go wrong. I mean, A, to find out why they went wrong and to try and set it up in future. And th this means all this means you must have the right people. Having the right people, or more particularly, having people who make good decisions and have the right attitudes. So it, it needn't be someone who is right the first time, but someone who learns and, uh, and starts to make intelligent and correct decisions. Wow. So when you left Gresham's, did you think that you'd be anywhere near where you are today? I mean, I, I literally left on a Honda 50, not quite with a stick and a red spotted handkerchief over my shoulder but literally on the Honda 50 from Norfolk to go to London. And I knew I was off for a big adventure and I didn't know what I wanted to do at, at all. I did art at school and really enjoyed it. And whilst my contemporaries were going off to do voluntary service overseas, which is a very noble thing to do, I thought I'd take myself to art school in London and see if art was the career I wanted to follow. I arrived and, and really enjoyed art, drawing and painting, and then was told that there was this thing called design and why didn't I think about being a designer? I discovered at university, at the Royal College of Art, ultimately, about manufacturing, engineering and design. And I absolutely realized that's what I wanted to do. And I had this ridiculous ambition when I was at the Royal College of Art that I wanted to be a manufacturer and produce revolutionary products but it was a you know it was a pipe dream but i had no idea that i would eventually end up where, where i am now employing sixteen thousand people and having a global company but thank goodness i didn't really i mean it, i was too busy trying to make it happen to to have too many ambitions we're now getting to the end of our time we always like to ask our guests what their favorite book movie and song is ah right well books um well at gresham's i read animal farm which is, as you know, political satire and, and has been really sort of useful to me <laughs> throughout my life. Any novel by William Boyd, I always always read his latest novels. They're just really good. A lot about life, the whole lot of different aspects of life, as well as um, exciting yarns. A song, yeah. I've chosen Eric Idle's I Galaxy song, um, because I didn't know all those things about the galaxy and because it takes you out of, out of the earth and up into somewhere completely different. With amazing facts and it's very funny as well and films um well gosford park is one of my favorite films it's long before downton abbey but gosford park is a much more interesting study of edwardian social attitudes between the toffs and the servants and it it, it, was, it was the only film which really showed what it's like to be a servant in a big house in those days thank you so much james for for these amazing answers and for coming on today it's just it's been amazing thank you well, thank you, Charles. And it was great speaking to you. And I yeah, like you... your studio. I wish I had a studio <laughs> like that. <laughs> okay, see you on speech day. Thank, thank you very much.